Uh, have everybody turn to Hebrews 13.5. That's going to be the verse I'm going to start off with. Um, I'm going to go through a couple announcements and then pray, and then we'll get into this. Uh, there's not really very many offer, uh, announcements this evening. Uh, uh, we just had the Secret Pals Exchange. It's going to be January 29th for you ladies that are here that are involved in that. Um, just remember the people that are on the prayer list. Keep everybody, every one of those in your in mind. Uh, there's the majority, most all of these have been on here for a very long time. But even though they've been on here for a very long time, does not mean that it's you know that uh, that they've just been forgotten to be taken off. Uh, they have some serious health concerns and uh, need prayer, as much prayer as we can get, or they can get. Uh, featured Sermon of the Month, Slip Slide Fall. That was Pastor Jackson back in 09. Uh, it's a good message. Uh, you can get a hold of me if you still want a copy of that. That's going to get changed up this Sunday. I listened to another one from, I think it was 2002, and uh, just on fire. Uh, I, the name is eluding me at this moment, but they're gonna, we're going to have a new Sermon of the Month uh, in the bulletin on Sunday, and I'm working on getting some of the series together. Like there's one on, uh, there's one on marriage, there's one on temptation and everything, and I'm working on finding those and getting those together and kind of I'm running into a little bit of some roadblocks on that, but I think I have it figured out. So I can look forward to seeing some more, maybe some of those here in the near future. Um, the, let's see, one person trusted Christ, their Savior last week or the week before. I think there was a couple others that didn't get, that she didn't see that should have been on there, but uh, we need to keep it up. Time's coming, it's getting close. So uh, if you know anything, pay attention to any of uh, the prophetic books, especially Revelation and, and that. Uh, I mean, prophecies are opening up in front of our eyes on a daily basis. And uh, so we can look, well, we don't have to look forward to that. We're not gonna be here, but we can look forward to us not being here when that does happen. So, uh, which me personally, I'm glad I'm not gonna be here when it happens. So. All right, let's go ahead and I think that's it. So let's go ahead and pray and I'll get started. So, dear Holy Father, we thank you for this day and this evening. Thank you for letting us be able to come together to get out and uh, um, to fellowship a little bit and to uh, learn something from the Bible. And Lord, I ask that you, you give me the words to, to say, the words to, that, that you need to get across to encourage somebody, to help somebody, to, to, uh, to maybe help them out tomorrow or the day after, or just something they can remember for later on. Um, help me to be a help for you. In your name, amen. Okay, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. It says... Uh, let's see where are we at? Okay. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have, for he ha for he hath said, he being God, he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Now that last part, that last part is what I want to focus on. That's going to be the first part of my the first little part of my message. I'm going to try very hard not to be long. Um I kind of specialize in short and sweet, so I'm going to try to keep going with that. Um, so the, the last part of that verse says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Now everybody, everybody that's a Christian knows that. Even people that aren't saved know that. God says he's never going to leave me, he's never going to forsake me. It's pretty much ingrained in us from earth, well, for me anyways, early childhood, being and having grown up in the church, uh, I, uh, I was in church from 
day one, my first trip out of the house was to church uh, when I was a baby. And from then on, I continued to be in church every week, every time the doors were open. And so that, that little phrase, that verse, the last part of that verse has always been ingrained in us. There's been sermons preached on it, Bible messages preached on it, Bible studies. There's been, uh, when, I was at, when I was at the academy, uh, Bible classes have been taught on, he will not leave you, he will not forsake you. He's not going to leave you, he's not going to forget about you. And we've always learned that. We, we know that, we've always heard it, and it's, it's something that we always go back to. We always go back, well, he's not going to leave me, he's not going to forsake me. So the, the thing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go a little bit into my testimony a little bit as an example for this. Um, some of you know my testimony, some of you don't, some of you know part of it. Um, I don't really go into this much, uh, but back, uh, let's see here, Abby was 4, 3, 10, Grace was 12, 13, so seven, eight, eight years ago, nine years ago, uh, things had happened in my life that, and, and right off the bat, I will tell you that my life was not the picture of Christianity at the time, at the time at all. And I'm sure that a lot of people can, can understand what I'm saying when I do say that, but we weren't in church, the previous marriage, we were not in church. When we did go to church, it was more of a uh, I'll say a feel good prosperity kind of gospel church that was all about you know well you know what God's here to make us feel good and that's it so but that was about and it was very rare that we would even go there well at some point in time my entire world got turned upside down we'll say and uh Things did not go as well as what I had thought they were going to as far as my life. Things got bad. They got really bad at some points. And But the thing that, that I always remembered, of course, is that, you know what? I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. I'm supposed to be going to church. I know this. I know God loves me. And he will never forsake me. He'll never leave me. He's not going to forget about me. He's with me. But then I came into the whole attitude of, well, you know what? If, if he's not going to leave me and he's not going to forsake me, then why are these bad things still happening? happening? He's with me, but I'm still going through this. He's with me, but I still feel bad every day. He's with me, which... I'm glad he was because being with me, I, I really do believe that God protected me through that time of my life. Like, I mean, the, the Bible says that we have an angel assigned to us and that God's not, the Bible says he's not going to leave us or forsake us. He protected me during that time to get me to where I'm at now. And I'm glad he did. But at the time, I didn't really fully understand what I was remembering. He's with me. He's not going to leave me. But why is why are these things still happening? And then I even I straightened up a little bit. I straightened up a little bit. Started doing what I was supposed to do. I started going back to church, not the right church. It was still the the other one. But I was reading my Bible. I was praying. But it was for the wrong reasons, is that I was doing that. I figured, all right, you know what? Well, if he's not going to leave me or forsake me, I'm going to start doing what I, I know he wants me to do, and then maybe I'll get my way. Well, as we know, I mean, man plans, God laughs. That was kind of <laughs> pretty much uh, my plan didn't work, 
And then things just went bad again. And then it was back to, well, you said you're not going to leave me. You said you're not going to forsake me. Then where are you? Where are you? Why aren't you here? Why aren't you helping me? Why aren't you making me, why aren't you making me feel better? Why am I still, why am I still depressed? I'm still sad. I'm mad all the time. Why can't you just step in and j- just step in and fix this? Because I know you can. Just step in and fix it. Well, see, the problem is, is then later on, after lots and lots of other things happened that made me question this and everything that I thought I believed and, and everything, I, I was, I was, uh, I was re- like I said, I was reading the Bible. I was reading it religiously. And different sections, different chapters, different books, just bouncing back and forth everywhere. And then one day, I came across Matthew, the chapter of 11, verses 28 through 30. And that says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest under your soul, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. And, and I, 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 remember, I remember the night that I read that, because it, it legitimately stopped me in my tracks. Because those three verses right there, and it, it, it came to me because I, I still had the mindset of you're not going to leave me, you're not going to forsake me, you're with me, you're with me all the time, you're here, I know you're here. And then it dawned on me, it was that the part that I forgot is that you not only, no, he's not going to leave you, God is not going to leave you, but the thing that people forget and most of the time they forget when they run into trouble, is that even though he's with us and he's not going to forsake us or leave us, we still have to seek him. We have to seek him if we want to feel better about ourselves, spiritually, mentally. We have to seek him if... When we seek him and we do what we're supposed to do and we're seeking solely him, and that is our sole purpose is to seek him and what he wants and what he wants us to do, and we put aside, when we can get it in our, mentally get it in our, in our heads that, you know what, my problems are nothing to God. My, everything that I'm going through The only one that can fix this is God. And when we put aside, I almost don't want to say selfishness for ourselves, but for lack of a better word, that's the word I'm going to use. When we put aside our selfishness to feel better because we had a bad day and we seek him, that's when he's going to come out and, take our burden. He's going to come out and he's going to make our burden lighter. He's going to come out and, and, and what does it say? It says his yoke is easy and his burden is light. So when we seek him, which is what he wants us to do, we have to chase after him. We have to, we have to go after him and what he wants. That's when our burden is going to get lighter. Now, everybody knows the Christian life is not easy, but When we seek him and we go after him and we try to learn what he wants, that's when things in the worldly sense, like in my case, eight, nine years ago, that was when my life, I mean, things started getting a little bit easier. I could get up in the morning. I'd get up in the morning. I'd pray. I'd read my Bible. I'd pray. I'd go to work. I'd get home from work. And and the whole time, and I memorized these three verses. I would go to work. I worked 12 hour shifts at Taylor Glass. And 
I can't even begin to begin to tell you the amount of times I recited those three verses over and over in my head. Every day, every hour, every time. I mean, just over and over and over and over and over because there was there were days that that's what I needed to do. And then there was other days where I could, okay, you know what? I don't know what's going on, but I come unto me. This is what I got to do. And I recite those verses and I do it over and over and over again. And once I was doing that in the and praying, reciting, reciting scripture for one is a way to seek him. See, because we don't just, we don't necessarily just have to pray and read the Bible to seek God in order for him to lighten our burden, in order for us to know that he's there for him to help us. Reading our Bible and praying aren't the only ways. We can we can seek God in how we act. We can seek God in where we go. We can seek God in, okay, at work, somebody did something or said something, and um, just an example, a couple of weeks ago, my maintenance technicians decided that they knew how to hang a door. They slaughtered this door. <laughs> it closed, <laughs> but not well. Okay, the hinges were all dug out. I mean, it was, it was bad. And in seeking Christ, and this is a perfect example, I chose not to blow up, which is seriously what I wanted to do because it takes about six to eight weeks to get these doors from my, my manufacturer. And they're, so they're a precious commodity. So when you kill one, you're out, you know. Um, so, but in seeking Christ, which I try to do every day instead of blowing up and getting mad and demeaning them and just telling them they were dumb. What were you thinking? It was like, hey, you know what? It's cool. We got to learn sometime. Next time, call me and I will show you how to do this. So in that, just in that example right there, Instead of being mad and showing the devil and being angry and blowing up, I showed Christ and I sought after him by showing kindness and almost understanding of what they did. You can seek Christ in the places that you go. Just This is just uh, hypothetical. Okay, when when you you go into, well, let's say you go into Walmart. Okay, uh, well, not really hypothetical because this is what I this is what I do when I go into Walmart. I seek Christ by going down the aisles that I know that there's nothing wrong with. Nobody can say, well, I saw Brother Dan going down this aisle. You know, the checkout where all the cigarettes and cigars are at. That's just a personal thing for me, but I don't do it. Um, I won't walk down the liquor aisle or where they have the beer coolers. I won't do it. That's a personal preference for me. But in doing that, I feel as though that's my way of showing, you know what? I'm not going to walk down there because somebody that I talk to tomorrow may have saw me in there and be like, well, he's reading me these verses on how to accept Jesus, but I just saw him in the liquor aisle. Now, that sounds silly, but that does happen. It does happen. So we can not only seek Christ in the things that we do, the things that we say, uh, the places that we go, instead of, uh, I mean, I mean there, there's, I, I, could, I could give a lot of examples. I can give a lot of examples, but the point is, is that instead of just knowing that God's not going to leave us and knowing that he's not going to forget about us, the other part of that, which he won't, he's there. He may not be proud of where you're at. 
He may not be proud of what's coming out of your mouth. He may not be proud of your attitude, but he is there. He's there. But the other side of that is, is what he wants us to do. If we want him to come out to help us, to ease us, so to speak, mentally, spiritually, to grow us spiritually, we have to seek him as well. And a couple, I mean, the biblical examples of this is the, 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 par, um, uh, the, the, the parable of the ten lepers. The ten lepers called out and called out. You know, they sought Jesus as they saw him walking by. They got healed, and then the one went further and sought him out. He, he knew that Christ was with him, but he sought Christ out. And he got the blessing. He was made whole. He was healed. The woman with the issue of blood, she believed she had faith. And I, I would assume that because of her faith and her dedication to knowing that Christ was there, that God was with her. But what did she do? What was the one thing that literally made her famous? She sought out Christ. She took it upon herself to seek him, and she was made whole. And that's no different than us today. Even though we know he's there, we have him. We are never, if you're saved, if you, if you are saved and you've accepted Jesus as your Savior, he's never going to leave you or forget you or leave you just laying in the dirt on the side of the road. He's with you. But he wants you to seek him. He wants you to have a walk with him. He wants you to have a relationship with him. And to seek him will ease anything that you have going on. It's going to ease, because it says right here, it says right here, come unto me, all ye that labor. All ye that labor doesn't mean hard at work in a rock pit. If you're laboring, that can mean spiritually, physically, mentally, and, that, and are heavy laden, you have a heavy heart. You have things on your heart, things on your mind that just seem overwhelming. And he says it right here. And I will give you rest. I will give you rest. And this wasn't just a secondhand conversation that the disciples were writing down, these were actually written down as Jesus said them. These are his words telling us, if you're having problems, seek me, and I'm going to help you. I'll make it easier for you. Disclaimer on that, your problems may not go away, but mentally... And spiritually, you'll be able to deal with them better. You'll be able to handle, because you'll have a, in my case, I think, in most situations, when you seek him and, and he's there and you're walking with him, you have a clearer head. You have a clearer head for these things. You're not as emotionally volatile to see things the wrong way. And then, what, and then what does he say? He says, take my yoke. And everybody knows what a yoke is. A yoke is what they used to put on the oxen. They put them on horses and everything to guide them so that they go together for work. Okay? It says his yoke, learn of me, seek him in his word. Learn of me, go to church, Hear are the messages, here are the sermons, the Bible studies. Seek him, learn of him in your devotions, in conversations, in fellowship. Uh, I mean, and it, and it could be anything, but learn of him. He tells us to learn of him. He says, because he's meek and lowly of heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. He's, he tells us that to learn of him, Seek him out, and our spirits are going to be lifted. We're going to we're going to be it, we're going to be lighter. Things aren't going to seem as dark. Be seek, folks, because there was there was a time where 
where I couldn't see the light. I couldn't see, and I was, I was drowning in everything going on around me. And the only thing that I had that kept me going was every time when I would get up, I would read the Bible. I'd get up, I'd read, because I knew that's what I had to do. I knew that's what I had to do. That's what I looked forward to every day. And then that's when I read this. That's when I read that verse, these verses. And that helped me because it, it kind of, I'm going to say it, it changed my direction mental. It mentally changed my direction on what I was supposed to be doing. I was reading the Bible because I knew that's what I had to do, but I wasn't reading the Bible to further understand what Jesus, about Jesus. I wasn't reading it to further my understanding of what he wanted. I was reading it, I, I was reading it like I was reading a book of Shakespeare. If we want to be completely honest, that's what I was doing because that's what I knew I had to do. I knew that's what I had to do. I had to pray and I had to read my Bible. That's what I had to do. But my prayers were, help me, help me, help me, help me, blah, 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 blah. Reading the Bible, I wasn't reading it to learn. I was reading it just because it was kind of like a, uh, it was a necessity of my day, like getting up and making my coffee. Now, everybody's, everybody's going to go through this. Everybody will. Nobody's immune to it. Uh, everybody's going to have problems. Everybody's going to have problems mentally. Everyone's going to have problems physically. Everybody's going to have problems spiritually. And the Bible even tells us that. It tells us that when we get older, that he can guarantee us so many years. And then beyond that is just, you know, he tells us that we're going to, our, 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 our physical self is going to, is going to fail. Okay, but he also tells us that there's times that we're going to fall spiritually too. He doesn't guarantee that every day is going to be unicorns and rainbows. He does not tell us that. He tells us over in Proverbs, he tells us in Proverbs that a just man falleth. He knows us. He knows it. Because of sin, that's the reality of the Christian life. That a just man falleth seven times. But we get back, if we get back up through seeking him in our thoughts and our speech and our actions, where we go, learning about him, seeking him, seeking his words, seeking what he wants, seeking his truth, seeking his promises. When that just man falleth seven times, eight, nine, 10, 15, a thousand times, and he gets back up seeking God, seeking Christ, our burden's going to be light. The problems aren't going to go away. I mean, they may eventually, but we'll be able to ha <laughs> we will be able to handle them better. And the other thing is with getting into God's word and learning to seek him and learning of him, that also goes with when certain situations come up, most of the time we'll be able to, hey, you know what? I just read that. There's going to be a verse that's going to help us get through that. There's going to be a verse that pertains to that certain situation. There's going to be a verse that pertains to that person at work that just completely annihilated your entire week. And instead of being in a bad mood and kicking rocks out in the parking lot, being mad, you're going to be like, okay, you know what? The Bible talks about a fool. <laughs> and, and, you know, even as funny as that is, there's times that that's what it is. Okay, you know what? God said that a foolish man is going to do this. A foolish man, is, the fool will do this. Okay, you know what? He's just being a fool. God says, I got to love him. I got to understand him. I got to help him if I can. If not, well, then he can go out in the parking lot and kick rocks because I'm not going to let it get to me. You know, and that's that, that kind of attitude. That's where we, we can see, even if we don't see it, but other people will, will see that that's where the difference is at, where we've sought out Christ 
And we're learning from that. Even if we don't even realize it's happening, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. But we have to just seek him, just to seek him. Put aside the day, put aside the week, put aside whatever. You know, I don't know, Mrs. Pitt burnt your dinner. You know, forgive her and put it aside, you know. But, you know, it's, I mean, we laugh, but I mean, some people get mad about that stuff, you know. No, I mean, don't tell Sarah I said this, but I mean, she burnt dinner last night. You know what, honey, I love it that way. I'm not telling her any different. I mean, it still tasted good, but you know, she's not up there. It's the only reason I said it. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but you know, but I mean, the thing of it is, is when, when you, when you strive to seek Christ, knowing that he's not going to leave us or forsake us, but yet we carry on to that other part to where we're seeking him. And a lot of people forget that. We forget that so easily because we just get so immersed in what's going on. And it's like, oh man, what am I going to do? You know, I mean, I got, you know, the house needs a roof. The house needs siding. The, the, the dog just knocked the rail off the porch. Now I got to fix that. And, you know, we get so immersed in everyday life and everyday problems and every, you know, the catastrophes that happen that we think are catastrophes. But the thing that we're missing out is that we, we forget about the second half. We forget to seek him. And that's the whole point of my message. As a matter of fact, I mean, that's, that's the name of the message is seek. Seek, seek him. Don't forget to seek. Because everybody knows God's not going to leave us. If you're saved, if you know Christ, your Savior, he's not going to leave us. He won't. He tells us he will not. That was our gift from God. But the other part of that is in order for us to have a better life, a good life, not, I mean, and he doesn't promise that we're going to have a better life physically. He doesn't promise we're going to have a better life financially. Okay. But he will tell, he will, he does tell us that he's going to make our burden lighter. Because his work is easier, his, his yoke, his yoke is easier and lighter so that we can bear it. And sometimes that's, that's, that's the difference between giving up and succeeding. It's just, you know what, that burden's just a little bit lighter. You know what, I can make it this next day. I can make it this next hour. I can get through the night. And sometimes that's all you need. As long as we remember to seek him, we've kind of got, we've got the key to success. Know that he's there. He's not going to leave. And seek him. Learn of him. It's a kind of a no-brainer if you pay attention to it. So let's pray. I'm done. Dear Holy Father, I want to thank you for this evening. I want to thank you for helping me come up with the words uh, for this. Um, short, simple. I mean, it's this is probably something that lots of people have heard over and over and over again. But Lord, you know, I've got this habit of just the little reminders are sometimes the, sometime the biggest things. Sometimes it's where the biggest lesson is learned out of just the smallest reminder. Um, I pray that it helps somebody, at least one person, whether it be in this auditorium or on Facebook, out on the World Wide Web. Just help people to remember that they have to seek you. And you promised us that you would you'd make our burdens lighter. You promised us that you would help us spiritually and to get us through. And you never break your promises, Lord. We want to thank you for that. We want to thank you for your mercy and your grace and all the love that you give us. And thank you for sending your son to die for us. Hope everybody have a good night and safe travels home.
In your name, amen.